everyone. This is Ivana coming to you from my house. Um, for everyone that's watching from Girls Inc. of Carp in Santa Paula, I want to say hi. Um, today, I'm going to do a little experiment from home. And um, this is something that uses uh, probably materials that you have at home. Um, and so we're going to talk up a little bit about chromatography. Um, the, the one that we're doing is called paper chromatography. And it's a method that is used to separate mixtures um, that uses paper and solvents like water. So for our um, mixture, we're going to use markers because every marker inside of this um, little tube has some sort of ink, and that's our mixture. For our paper, we're going to use coffee filters. And so if your parents drink coffee um, and they make it in a big coffee pot then they probably use this to filter out their coffee grounds and so with your parent permission please ask them if you could take one or two so this is made out of paper really thin paper so we're going to be using that and then a cup with water um, make sure that you ask to see if you can use your regular cups or if maybe you can use something else um, sometimes you can even have like a little yogurt cup that was already used and you can just rinse that out and use that okay and then for the other couple things, you're going to need some scissors if you want to decorate your paper chromatography at the end. And then for your um, little paper to kind of like be dipped in the water, I'll explain the process. Um, you might need a little clip. I have, have this little chip clip. I clip my little chips, uh, chip bags with these. Or if you have a bobby pin, I wear these in my hair all the time and so I could also use a bobby pin or if you have like clothes pins, if you ever use clothes pins um, for washing and hanging up your clothes, you can use those as well. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I have my table down here. Let me show you a little bit of what this looks like. Maybe you can see it, maybe you cannot. But I covered my table with a piece of paper because I do not want to get that on my desk. And so I want to make sure that this is it well this is a really thin piece of paper and it's gonna bleed through when you start making your design so you want to make sure that something is covering the surface because I do not want your parents to be upset that you know even though this is a washable marker that it went through so we covered our surface and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of my favorite colors I have blue I have turquoise because that's my favorite and then I have a red to represent girls ink so I'm going to make a design and I think for today, I want to start off with just circling around to have a little bit of a blue in there. And then maybe I'll make some little lines, kind of like a blue sun. Have some fun with it. And then I'm not going to put my next color super close to it because I know that the whole experiment is supposed to have these colors run and kind of spread out and that's what we're experimenting so if I'm telling you that it's gonna go um, and spread out I don't want to put colors too too close together because I do want to see what it's gonna look like when they spread out and if we put them really close together they're just gonna mix but who knows I mean red and blue make purple so that'd be a cool color to see because I know I'm not using purple, so we're gonna do another circle. And then at the end, I'm gonna add some like turquoisey little triangles on here. Little, not even triangles, because I'm not, well, I guess I could close them. I'll close my little triangles up. All right. So the next step is. I'm going to fold this. So in order for it to go, you see I didn't put so much water on here because I want to make sure, let me look this up, I want to make sure that it doesn't like overflow um, and when I'm dipping it, it doesn't just grab the whole paper and, it, and the paper is going to absorb water. So I don't want the paper to just absorb all the water. I kind of just want to put a little tip of the paper and um, have the water, uh, and have the paper, sorry, absorb the water all the way up. So I'm going to go back down here, fold my paper in half once, and then I'm going to fold my paper again. So now I've done this, and I'm going to fold it one more time, just one more time to make it look like a little pizza. Let's see? Oops. 
awesome. All right, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is because I only want the tip of this to kind of like go in here. I'm gonna see, this is about the right amount of water, and I'm just gonna get the tip of it, just the tip, and I'm going to hold it with my chip clip. And for this part, you're gonna have to wait, I would say like maybe two minutes if you wanna run, go get a snack, do something fun. Um, I would just let it sit there. The coffee filter is really thin, and so the water goes through it super quick, but it still needs a few, maybe one or two, two, two minutes for it to kind of absorb, because once it reaches the higher part of the paper right here, it starts slowing down because it's a wider space. It's a wider space that the water has to fill, so it has to take a, a minute. So um, uh, we'll check up on it in a little bit. Right, so we waited a few minutes. Um, I actually gave it a few more minutes than you could. Um, and so we're going to check out what we have. Um, right here we have our experiment. And I'm going to open it up. Um, I forgot to tell you, if you have a, a paper plate, that would be really awesome to put it in afterwards just so that it doesn't drip. Um, or you can use a regular plate, preferably something that's not going to absorb the color and stain something forever. So um, ask your parents to see what you could use. Or even if you want to go outside for this, um, you can kind of like put it on the grass or something so it can dry. So I'm going to open this up. And my water is hardly colored because, remember, the um, solvent didn't go down into the water. It was absorbed by the paper. Okay, so this is the part where you might get a little stained. Um, be very careful. Use the tip of your um, fingers. And I'm going to open this up. And so, as you can see, bring this up right here, the colors really did spread out and separate um and there's actually you might not see this super closely i'm gonna kind of bring this back down here you might not be able to see it super closely because my camera isn't the best but you actually see a little bit of like brown and like like separation of some colors up here that i didn't even start off with so that's really amazing um and so this kind of tells me that you know, A, yes, this experiment worked, and also that some of the colors that make up or s that make up this, this solvent or the inside of whatever's in the marker contain other colors, right? So that it's not just made out of blue, but it's made out of something else. Red isn't just red, but it's made up of something else in order to be red, right? They start off with something different. Our experiment is done and dry we have our uh, coffee filter super dry we have our colors here we have our blue we have the other colors that spread out we have some browns in here so this looks pretty cool i just put it outside for about 20 minutes right next to my porch to have it dry out and so now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make some artwork out of this or a craft i guess i could call it a craft um we are going to make a snowflake. Um, for those of you that have made snowflakes before, you usually make it out of a piece of paper or a tissue. This is kind of the same feeling as a tissue, as a tissue paper, like the, the one that you use for gifts. And so we're going to fold this this way first, so in half, and then we're gonna do this one more time. And then we're gonna do this one more time and so what we're going to do is we're going to use our scissors here, be very careful, and we're going to just cut little things. So make sure that when you're cutting, you cut not all the way to the, to the top, make little um, designs right here. You can even make designs on this side, and then if you want to even cut the middle, um, do little designs on this side, however you want. I actually have one already made, so I can show you how I did it, but I basically did little triangles be very careful and I did a lot more triangles around it and basically my end result is a cool snowflake this one was um, another one that I tried this one faded a little bit more but that's okay and so we have our beautiful um, snowflake artwork that I've 
if I have string, I can kind of like put it in my, um, in my house and just decorate my house. Um, <clears throat> with the tissue, you can also make, um, sorry about the tissue. With the filter, you can also make um, a butterfly or you can make a flower and scrunch it up, do this fun little activity. And then if you have like a straw or something, you can uh, use some tape and do that. But we just did a snowflake. So I hope you enjoy making this at home. Um, I'm going to try to do more activities where it's materials that you could have at home so you can do them with me. And um, as always, make sure that you're washing your hands. Um, watch our last video so that um, you can kind of get a little lesson on how to wash your hands properly. Um, and we use glitter in there. And tomorrow we'll be posting another video. So stay tuned. Bye, everybody.